the good trust you have been keeping up well thank you so much for clicking this video again so before we go into what we have for today let's have a brief word of prayer please Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for gathering every one of us. Lord in heaven, thank you for the subject of relationship. Lord, we ask you teach us what you expect us to know on the subject and beyond teaching us, raise generations to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The waiting phase is usually a very tempting phase. It's usually a very tough phase, especially from Christians who might even be experiencing some level of pressure, either from society, either from family, either from friends or whatever, from wherever it is. But we must learn how to handle this pressure. We must learn how to move through this phase in a way that, that will not just leave us happy, but also will be glorifying to God. So today we'll be discussing the subject in more detail. So do make sure to... Welcome to Relationship Talk with Godiva. Today we're going to be going over waiting for marriage. Waiting for marriage. Do make sure to watch until the end so you could get the most out of this video. Subscribe to this channel so we can help you with relationship tips regularly. Now let's get straight into the video. It is found according to the Disease Center of Control that 90% of men and 86% of women engage in sex before marriage. And we know that this can actually place a whole lot of pressure on Christians. And we, as we know, uh, marriage is meant to be pure and undefiled. That means no sex till after marriage. And we should know that this is not a punishment. It's beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. Because the single phase and the courting or dating phase is a period where you get to know each other. It's a period where you get to find out important things and have deeper conversation and make plans towards the marriage. It's not a time where you get blinded by sex. It's not a time where you, you, you have a sex with this person and all you think about is sex about this other person. You don't focus on the real matter and discussing the real important matters that need to be trashed out or agreed upon or whatever it is that needs to be paid attention to before the real marriage. Of which sex coming in before um, getting into marriage blinds your eye to some of these crucial things that you will still end up seeing in marriage and my regret if you never paid attention to sex first you might have saved yourself yourself the stress of walking into such relationship before we go into reasons why waiting to have sex in marriage is good for those during the waiting phase let us go over some of the deceptive reasons why people are lured into sex that's before marriage maybe when they're dating somebody the first one is to know the sexual compatibility of the other person, to know the sexual compatibility of the other person. You know, it's sad to know that some persons, um, who, it's sad to know that some people who go into a relationship, that some persons who go into a relationship, go into the relationship with a deceptive reason. Let me say the person appeared to be a Christian and maybe told the other lady, the other lady believed she, he's a Christian or the other man believed she's a Christian christian and um they avoided that is the other person was there to help each other that's they tried to abstain from any form of sex or whatever and one of the other person is thinking okay because he or she really because of our fear for god and he is really supportive or she's really supportive that we don't do anything that will be unpleasing to god only to go into marriage that's after marriage to find out that either the man is impotent or the woman has lost her womb as a result of abortion and as a result of this some persons now justify the reason that it's good to have sex before marriage to see if to know the sexual compatibility of this other person and to be sure if this other person is healthy or she will need to take or she will need to take and be pregnant before marriage so that i'll be sure she's capable of conceiving that she has not lost her womb as a result of any carelessness of anything that i don't know about so this fear has made young christians feel it is justifiable especially if you have both agreed to get married that you are in a dating or courting phase close to marriage to have sex 
before marriage. Highest, maybe before the pregnancy comes out so much, you people can just get married. If you are a true Christian, you're a child of God, don't allow this derail you. Don't allow this make you lose your place in God and believe the lie and go into fornication or immorality and build the foundation of your home with that kind, with that kind of stuff. Because you need God in a relationship. You need God. You need God. So don't start a foundation. Don't start something that don't don't build your home on a soy foundation. Any great building, any beautiful building needs a solid foundation. No matter how no matter how beautiful or how gigantic a home is, or if, if a building is, if the foundation of that home is soiled, that home, that building is, is just complete nonsense because it will just collapse and lives will be at risk. So this foundation time, your relationship during that courting phase, during that dating phase, is the phase that is very crucial. It's a phase that's very, very delicate. It forms the, the foundation on which that home will build throughout the years. So don't fall prey to all the lies. But some other persons even believe beyond compatibility or beyond um, all this um, finding out if the other person is okay or that about the person is not pretending or covering anything. It will help you enjoy yourself that enjoy yourself um, so that when you get into the home you'll be settled what a lie from a pit of hell one lady once advised me when i was younger telling me um um it will be good to go into some relationship um to to have a um, relationship with other guys so that uh, when you get married you'll be settled how does this how does this match up by God's grace, you've kept yourself in a relationship and you go into the relationship, you will now not be settled. How? Now, when you're going to, you've been jumping up and down and you'll be going into different relationship, it even puts you at a risk because when you finally settle with that person tomorrow, you will be longing for that hide and seek that you were having then that's no longer now. And that's what is leading so many people into idolatry. Because they are not having that hide and that feeling, that, that feeling of hide and seek they were once having, they're not having it with their partner anymore because this is someone they are living with. So they long for that feeling and that pushes them outside and that is, that is completely devastating. So this is a very big lie that you, in fact, keeping yourself before marriage even helps you to be more content and happy in your relationship and it also makes you you know that you can't see any man tomorrow i say i slept with this man or i had sex with this lady or this lady although it saves you from all those kind of stuff right so but even though you have been in those kind of condition thank god you're learning this today it's not for it's not the aim of this learning is not to condemn you but it's to know that you step out from that path and embrace doing it God's own way, okay? It's not in any way to, um, to condemn you. And if you're already a Christian and you're, you've gotten married to somebody who you both started foundation wrongly, just trust God. God is going to have mercy on you, but trust God and make sure that you know that you're genuinely transformed and you will teach the younger persons the way of the path of truth and not the other deceptive part. Okay, God knows exactly what's best for you. He knows exactly what's best for you. So following his guidance of relationship, following his paths of everything in life will only end up giving you peace of mind and happiness at the end. It's for your own good. It's not for his own good. It's for your own. His love is just for your benefit. You're, you're giving him, there is nothing he needs from you. You, he calling you to come to himself is for your own benefit. So it's important you are set to do it God's own way. Why? For your own good. Because if you love yourself, you want the best for yourself. And hence, you know who has the best for you. You work with his own guidance and you will be happy at the end. Okay? The next belief, the next lie is cohabitation helps you understand yourself better. You don't need to live with the other person. You don't need to live together with him or her for you to understand the other person. In fact, even in marriage, you've stayed with this person for 20 years. 
you have not still understood this person all. It's a continuous learning. You don't be deceived. The understanding of the other person you need before marriage, you don't need cohabitation to have the understanding of that. And don't believe cohabitation is there to help you understand the other person or that's before marriage. Because even the cohabitation, even any number of time you stay with this person, it's not enough to know that person if you are really in your wrong hand. Yeah. So it only leads you to doing things so that are not godly, that will even blind your eyes the more to pay attention to the relation, to necessary attributes that you should have to save yourself the stress in the relationship. So run away from cohabitation. Cohabitation, it's not good. Cohabitation, would not, it's not truthful that it's, it's going to help you gain the necessary understanding. If it was the best option, God will, will have permitted it. He will have permitted it because all he chooses for you is the best. Remember, he said marriage is honorable in all with the bed undefiled. So prevent cohabitation. So say no to cohabitation before marriage. Why? Because you want to have the clear mind to see all that you need to see, to converse all that is necessary to be conversed, to know if, yes, you're going ahead, to pray to God, go over praying over and over with God, pray, listen to God. I used to say, I should go ahead. I used to say, I should continue. This is foundation. This is necessary things you need at that stage before you go into the marriage. So don't be blinded. With, don't go into cohabitation. Just keep you away from praying to God. It will keep you away from seeing necessary things that need to be seen and call it what it is and go back to God in prayer if he's the one guiding you to the relationship or run away from the relationship if you were the one that just walked into the relationship. Okay, so cohabitation is doing you more harm and no good. It doesn't matter how it appears to be beautiful. It doesn't matter how it appears to be acceptable in the society. If you are a Christian, you are a child of God that knows you prefer the best for yourself. You prefer a home that is happy, a home that is peaceful. Please, it doesn't matter what the crowd is saying. Stand out and desire what is best for you. And what is best for you is God's own way. It's God's own guidance and directive, which is saying no to cohabitation, saying no to immorality before marriage. The next one is, I will ask God for forgiveness. I will ask God for forgiveness. You know, it's saddening when you intentionally go into a wrong thing with the mindset of, I will ask God for forgiveness. It's hurting. Just imagine you as an individual. If maybe someone you're in a relationship with intentionally hurts you. I'm using relationship because it's a relationship channel. Someone you're in a relationship with always hurts you, intentionally hurts you, maligns you, and tells you sorry, that he's going to tell you sorry. And maybe even if I hear him with his friend, my dear, I'm going to do this to her, but I'll sit there and sorry. She'll forgive me now. She'll forgive me. How will you feel? This is the same way God is saying, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That you love this person, you of course you forgive. But does it now mean this person should intentionally hurt you and because he knows you'll forgive? That is taking you, your grace, your forgiveness, your love for granted. This is the same thing you do when you say, I'm going to do it and I'm going to go back. I will tell God, for, for, I will tell God to forgive me. He's a merciful God who will still forgive me. So Bible says, shall you continue in sin? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. You cannot take the benevolence of God. You cannot take the love of God. You cannot take his presence that is made available for you on a platter of gold, on some other person's expense. You cannot take it just for nothing. Remember, even as much as God is a forgiving God, never forget He's a consuming fire. Some of the benefits of waiting is that waiting helps your relationship become better. Just like I earlier mentioned, when you don't have sex in before marriage, that during courting, it helps you have a clear eyes to pay attention to things and see things and know that is this who you want to go on to relationship with. And if you're sure, okay, this is God directing you to the person and you notice this red flag, it will help you call things for what they are and go back to God. For if he's the one that if he's the one and for him and iron anything out. So this will help the relationship improve and in turn will help you make better and best decisions that will be happy and that will, that will make the relationship a happy one and 
will give it the lasting peace on the long run. The next one is it helps the long lasting of the relationship. It has it helps the long lasting of the relationship. According to research, according to studies, couples who wait that's before marriage have the long lasting relationships. They have the long lasting, long lasting marriages and they have less chance of experiencing divorce. So waiting before marriage solidifies the foundation. And as a Christian, you know that divorce is not part of the option for you. So that is even why you know you need to pay attention very well and do it God's own way so that you will be happy. Okay, so waiting will help you have a long lasting relationship because it forms a solid foundation where you find out things and make better decisions and go back to God. Pray, know that you're on the right track because you're always communicating with God. It forms a very strong foundation that will help you grow during your relationship. One is self-discipline is a is a is a great Christian virtue. Self-discipline is a great is a great Christian virtue. If you're looking for immediate self-gratification, that is selfish. That is selfish. Seeking for immediate self-gratification. We help you from accepting the process and enjoying the process and reaping the long-term benefit afterwards because you're cutting off the long-term benefit just because you need something at the moment. And you end up spoiling or ruining the ones ahead. So you need so you need as a Christian to build self-discipline even before marriage. Because even in marriage, you wouldn't be having sex every 24 hours. And there might be times when okay, this other person is away, he have traveled for some time, or she have traveled for some else. Your circumstances that might even make it not you both are not together to have sex. So even for some time. So during that time, how are you going to cope if you don't build the self-discipline as a Christian? So you, if you're not careful during that time, you might sin against God. So self-discipline will help you even beyond courting and dating phase in marriage. You need it. You need it. So some of the some of the things that will help you during the waiting period, during the waiting stage, that's before marriage. So some of the things that are going to help you is number one, one is personal development, personal development. Learning never ends. Learning never ends. And the more you learn, the more you'll see more to learn. So be open to personal development. Be engaged with what God is expecting you to do per season. And by so doing, you will just see time is going. Minutes is running into hours and hours into days and days into weeks, months, years. And before you know it, the man might even come, even catch you unawares because you're already busy with other things. So be busy, just be busy with personal development. Get engaged with personal development. It will help you during that time. The next is spend time, spend fun time, have some fun time. Take time to visit the zoo, take time to visit the park. Take time to visit places and have fun, be happy. As long as it doesn't offend God, the fun I'm saying is something that is not displeasing to God. I'm not saying going to a club. I'm not saying having fun with a young random guy in a way that's not good. It's not godly to God. No, that's not what I'm insinuating. Having fun, that's going to park, going to a cinema. There are lots of places as a Christian you can have a very good fun and be happy and enjoy life and be happy with your family, with your friends and all of it that God has blessed you with at the moment. The next one is build strong relationship with God. When you build, there is no relationship that is as beautiful as the relationship you have with God. I'm telling you the truth because any other relationship can disappoint you, but he's the only relationship that cannot disappoint you. It's impossible. They said it's too immutable for God to lie. It's not possible for God to disappoint. So it's something that you build a relationship with God. You keep, you know, God is 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 like a a seed. It's like a, how do I describe it? it? It's you, you know, God is insatiable. You can know Him all. You can. The more you get to know Him, Him, the more you go deeper. The more you go deeper. So build your relationship with God and you will be happy you did. His relationship is superb. It's beautiful. It will keep you engaged, actually. In fact, at some point, you might not even be interested in relationship because you might be carried away with your own relationship with God, with personal development and all of that. 
and boom god will be like this is the time i need my young i need this my daughter or i need this my son to get into a relationship he will bring the person your path or show him to you or show her to you and you'll be like oh wow i uh okay let me go on with it because i will just not even focus in this area it's always it always happens that way so when you get to get focus with personal development fun time necessary with friends and family and development with god you will just notice you won't even be conscious of all the time you're paying attention to so in summary the waiting time is a very crucial time it's also a time filled with pressure but as a christian you must ensure never to allow any pressure never to allow anything lure you into a wrong relationship that is into a relationship where you will not be happy with you will know that i shouldn't have been in this relationship after you're in the relationship so it's a time when you're very careful you develop yourself you pay attention to detail because this is a time where you are as free you're as free as the air to also make a choice with someone you know you enjoy that freedom with and you'll be happier even with so it's something that you need to pay attention to but if you don't pay attention to this and use that free time carelessly you might end up with someone that you oh, you'll be like in a cave you'll just be like suffocating or what is this hell on earth so it's a time where you pay crucial attention to it's a beautiful time time where you you develop yourself you explore things you just do things that will help you determine if you do it even better or determine if you deteriorate because it depends on who you finally say i do to whether you get better and keep improving even best on what you have already started as a year single or whether you even deteriorate so it's up to you so make very good use of your single time and ultimately with god with god so i trust you've got a ton of value from this video and i hope you found it very interesting don't forget i'm a trained therapist in case you have any relationship concerns and you would love to reach out i will i would love to help you can get in touch by filling in the form using the link that will be dropped in the description box below. Or you can book an appointment with us by visiting godiverscounselinghome.com. I really hope you find the love and peace you so desire in your future current relationship at home. Do subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on more videos of relationship talk. Check out this other video on what to do when God sends you the one and I will see you in the next video.